Hello everyone, in this video we're going to look into another module of IGCSE physics called the nuclear physics. So the word nuclear stands from the word nucleus, which means that this branch of physics study what is the properties of the nucleus of an atom and what are the reactions that comes out from it. So initially, scientists thought that nucleus follows this model called the plum pudding model. So it is a disproof model of the atom which imagine it to be consists of a positive pudding like the protons here and the electrons on the other side. So it's like a pudding. And how it is disproved is from this experiment carried out by Ernest Rutherford. So what they figure out is that, hey, the atom should look like that. So this is also known as the solar system model of the atom. And the experiment that they carried out is this. So what Rutherford and the team does is that they fire the alpha particles. So alpha particles is a particle of made up of two protons and two neutrons. And at a very thin piece of gold foil. So if the atom really follows the plum pudding model, right? So it, they, should, they predict that the alpha particles should pass straight through the gold. And what they found out is that most of the particles pass straight through the void as predicted and some of them they deflected scarcely and a few of these alpha particles they actually bounce back towards the source of radiation so what this experiment shows according to Rutherford is that because alpha particles are positively charged they have two protons and if they are repelled back from the go foil is it must be another positive charge. Remember chapter 17 when we talk about electrical repulsion? So there must be another positive charge. But what the experiments show is that only a few are repelled. And it shows that the positive charge of the gold atoms was concentrated in a tiny space within the atom. And if not, a, that would be a lot of deflection. But then they found out that only a few bounce back. It shows that protons in an atom is gathered around a particular space. And the tiny core of concentrated positive charge at the heart of every atom is what we call today the nucleus, the nucleus of an atom. And to show you an image form of what Rutherford explained, this is it. So they figure out that new, there's actually a tiny spot in an atom that consists of all the positive charge, which is the nucleus. That explains why only a few of the alpha particle is reflected directly back at the source. So in this image form, this is what he meant. And again, here's a recap on the structure of an atom. Um, here we have nucleus in the middle, the solar system model as what is shown by Rutherford. They consist of proton and also neutron. And we'll now look into, since we now have proved that the structure of an atom follow out the solar system model, so we will investigate further. So in the center of the atom is the nucleus. They have proton and neutron. And the electrons is the one that is surrounding the atom. So um, by the way, if you put together proton and neutron, they are known as nucleons. So this table summarizes the information and masses and charges of the three subatomic particles, proton, neutron, electrons. So both protons and neutrons is in the nucleus, whereas electrons is orbiting the nucleus. And as we mentioned in chapter 17, proton has a charge of 1.6 times 10 to the power of negative 19 coulomb. So its relative charge is one as compared to neutron. And the mass of it is this amount. And you can see that electrons here, they are heavier. I mean, they are less lighter than proton and neutron. So that's why when you calculate ma relative mass, so this is the proportion of mass that electron has as compared to proton. So that's just some properties of the three subatomic particles. And if we look into atom, what determines the particular element in the periodic table is the number of protons. So if you take chemistry, you should um, be able to know this. And they are arranged in ascending order in other accordance to how many protons the atom has. And this is a way for us to visualize an element. So this is the helium element. And their first number notation here, the first number stands for nucleon number. 
which is the amount of proton plus the amount of nucleons, neutron. So two here stand for proton number, the number of protons. So in other words, by using this nucleon number and proton number, we can figure out how many neutrons by using the nuclear number minus the proton number. So that's just a very simple formula. And what can you deduce from whose, the atom whose nucleus can be represented by this? So this is a calcium. We know that they have 14 nucleon and then six protons. So this shows us that there are six protons here. Oops, let me use another color. Six protons. And because they have 14 neut nucleons, mean that if you want to find the number of neutrons, you have to use 14 minus 6. Therefore, you get 8 neutrons and also 6 electrons because um, we're considering that this element is um, neutral, meaning they have the same amount of electrons and protons. So protons, 14 neutrons, and 8. All right, so that's about it. And when we talk about elements, some elements, they have something called the isotopes. Isotopes means that they, these elements have the same number of protons, making them the same element, but then um, they have sometimes different neutron number. That means they are heavier in terms of their nucleus. So for instance, helium-4 and helium-3, they have the same number of protons, but helium-4 will have more neutrons. So in other words, they have four neutrons, so that's why the name nucleon-4 comes from. So again, 2, 3, 5, and 2, 3, 8, Uranium is the same. They have same proton number, different neutron number. So these isotopes, they have same chemical properties because they have same number of protons, but then those with greater number of neutrons is going to be heavier. So the charge on the nucleus is equal to the number of protons. So it has a relative charge of plus one. And the mass of the nucleus is relative equal to the mass of the nucleon as both protons and nucleon neutron has a relative mass of one. So go back to our example just now. If I have a uranium-235, it has a charge of plus 235 because, oh, no, no, sorry, sorry, sorry. It has 92, plus 92 um, charge because it has 92 protons. And then for uranium, the mass will be 235 because that's the amount of nucleon that it has. So when it comes to, so now we have studied the structure of an atom. So let's look into some of the reactions that can occur in the nucleus of an element. First one is nuclear fusion. We have already learned this in chapter 7. And it happens when in a uranium get hit by a neutron. So the additional neutrons here will make the uranium unstable. And therefore, it will undergo process called nuclear fusion to two different elements here. And then with three, again, three neutrons. Most importantly, is the energy that they release. So that's um, the formula, the equation of nuclear fission. You can see that uranium gets hit by a neutron. It becomes this element plus this element plus two neutron plus some energy. One thing to note here is do look at the amount of protons before and sorry, nucleon before and after the equation. You'll find out that if you sum this up, you'll get 236. And after the equation, you will get the same number, also 236. So the number of protons and nucleons before and after a nuclear reaction is going to be the same. That's also how you can balance it. Great, so um, they said also lead to chain reaction because all these elements here, they could be hit by another element that leads to more reaction to happen. And that's what happened in nuclear fission. And as for nuclear fusion, it's a lot simple. It's when two hydrogen elements like different hydrogen element, they combine together to form helium plus a neutron plus a lot of energy. All right, so what scientists found out is that for both nuclear fission and nuclear fusion, the total mass of the particles here, particle mass, before a fission or fusion reaction is slightly more than after the reaction, meaning the mass of this mass at one, and the mass of this here, mass 1 is greater than mass 2. But if you think about it, where does the loss mass go? Like, where is the, all this mass be converted to? And that leads us to the famous Einstein formula called E equal to mc squared. m stands for the mass that is lost during the equation. 
and then C stands for the speed of light, then you power by 2. And if you use the mass loss multiplied by the speed of light square, you will get the energy release, which can be super big. Um, so imagine that 1 kg is lost, multiplied by 3 times 10 to the power of 8, power of 2. That is a huge amount of energy. So that, that is just a basic summary of what the equation E equal to mc squared stands for. So in this video, we show how the plum pudding model is first disproved by a Rutherford experiment. And then we also study um, the different properties of proton, electrons, and neutrons. So uh, that's it for this chapter. In the next video, we'll look into how this nuclear reaction will release something called radioactive particles. And I'll see you in the next video. Thank you so much for watching.